it is 2,267 years ago. Millions of people were forced to relocate to a massive space station circling the planet because of the harm humans had caused to the planet, which eventually rendered it unsuitable for life. The fugitives now live side by side with hunger and poverty, and their shared desire is to reach Rhea, a planet that resembles heaven. Dr. Laura Portman tapes a message to her sister Ariane, who has already relocated to Rhea, a lovely planet that can house all the refugees left homeless when Earth became uninhabitable, as she is waiting to check in at a raucous waiting area. One of those people who held out hope for the catastrophe until the very last, Laura discovered that her sister was correct and that there were too many people in the space stations around the globe. In order to get a flight to Rhea, Laura accepts a position aboard the cargo ship Cassandra. The crew and Portman will spend the most of the eight-year journey in a deep sleep. At last, Laura hears her name called over the telephone and she is transported to the spacecraft by a tiny shuttle. The newcomer is introduced to the rest of the crew by Anna Lindbergh, the ship's first officer. The crew is informed of the flight plan by Captain LaCroix, who also cautions them that a space security officer is on board for security reasons. Lieutenant Decker doesn't keep him waiting long, as he soon makes his appearance before the crew. The captain advises him to check the cargo area as he will be starting the engines in a few hours and the crew will all enter anabiosis. When Decker is left alone with the crew, he tells them about a terrorist who has previously attacked many cargo ships and is demanding that space stations and robots be removed from the planet. Laura sees Earth moving away from their spacecraft through the viewport and is saddened by it, but she is comforted by the idea of her sister and Rhea. At last, Cassandra fires up the engines and begins her lengthy voyage. The crew member's schedule for emerging from anabiosis and reporting for duty aboard the ship is set by the captain. Laura falls into the gel tank with the others and doses out for approximately three and a half years. Laura awakens and reads a note from her sister, which was delivered from Rhea some years ago. Her duties include reading sensors, tending to the plants, and preventing herself from going insane from loneliness. Dr. Portman leaves Ariane a message one evening in which she informs her sister about her work and the fact that they are bringing building supplies to the station. Laura hears an odd sound one evening, but the girl tells herself she's merely dreaming. The astronaut tries even harder to exercise in an attempt to block out the noise, but it doesn't work, rather, it gets louder and repeats more frequently. Laura decides to investigate the problem and makes her way to the cargo area, where she is startled to see activity behind the wall. Laura encounters Decker in the hallway as she flees, he instantly awakens up after getting the signal to unlock the cargo area. The auditor objects, but Laura chooses to follow orders and wake the crew in spite of the security officer's requests to see what so terrified Portman. Being awakened early bothers Captain LaCroix as well. When Portman takes the guys to the cargo area, they notice that the girl didn't consider the possibility because the glass door had two different handprints on it. After entering the compartment and entering the access code, the captain obtains signals from the central computer that indicate the oddity started during Laura's shift. Although LaCroix is not in a rush to place the blame, he assures the girl that he will examine everything. The group continues, entering a compartment with several compartments. In an attempt to identify the source of the weird noise, the captain separates it into three conditional pieces and gives his subordinates instructions to examine each one. Laura notices right away that none of the construction supplies they should be carrying are visible when the astronauts inspect their portions while conversing over the radio. As the girl attempts to inform the captain of this, he flies straight by her. Decker and Laura are examining the captain when all of a sudden a light above them alerts them of the gate's impending closure. Seizing LaCroix, the two quickly leave the cargo compartment to prevent freezing. Laura declares the captain dead, but not before the crew manages to elude the hefty gate for a little second and carries him out safely. By now all the crew members are awake as well, and Officer Lindbergh assumes leadership in accordance with the procedures. In order to determine the precise reason of LaCroix's death, she gives the personnel instructions to inspect his body, repair the gate, and check the central computer. As the girl examines the body, she notices something odd about the elderly man's eye, it's an artificial surveillance camera. Laura invites Decker in and promises to show him a recording of LaCroix's last moments. The firm observes nothing of note, but they are intrigued by the area the captain visited, according on the signage, the cargo bay is not intended for boards, but rather for items requiring specialized equipment and refrigeration. Containers of sleeping men are found in the compartment from where LaCroix fell which Laura and Decker investigate after learning from the technician that the gate is completely broken. The auditor tells the other guys to carry the tanks out of the cargo bay and extends an invitation to them. Abruptly, the enormous containers start to move. Laura and the others are unable to flee, but the girl is able to reach Decker by holding onto a ladder, and Decker helps her. Officer Lindbergh is informed of everything by the crew, but Laura is adamant that someone else on the ship moved the containers, 
not them. However, the captain requests that everyone forget what transpired, return the capsule, and refrain from inventing any new stories. The captain agrees to disclose all information to management, but the firm manages to press. After examining the capsule, Laura determines that artificial sleep has put its contents into a coma. She is unable to examine it completely because of the sarcophagus, and the doctor is unable to open it. The captain requests that a staff member monitor the details Lindbergh provides to Decker since she appears to be worried about a recruited colleague. Laura is informed by Decker that the station they are traveling to is ostensibly a sizable communications hub. The staff member chooses to remain silent about what is actually happening and, switching the topic, inquires as to Laura's reason for flying. The girl acknowledges that her goal is to visit her sister on Rhea. Decker gives her an unexpected kiss after being impressed by her response. The men must continue working on the gate even though they get uneasy when they hear odd noises. A little passenger is found inside the capsule by the girl after Decker assists a colleague in opening it. Laura finds a cable put into the girl's spine after scanning her body. The doctor is given permission by a security guard to examine the girl, but he requests that she keep the results to herself. Laura records a message for her sister in the evening. Despite knowing that it will take years for the video clip to reach Rhea and that she won't see her sister for a while, she still confides in her and expresses her feelings to her. However, an odd thing occurs, a little while later, Laura gets a message from Ariane, who joyfully informs her that she is relieved to hear from her sister and to know that she is alright. Laura knows that something weird is happening and that Decker surely knows too, but instead of offering an explanation, the man kisses the doctor once again, erasing all memory of the situation. The captain calls everyone into the wardroom and says that Decker was awake the whole journey, according to the computer statistics. Lindbergh suspects the security guard of having anything to do with LaCroix's death, so he issues an arrest warrant for him. Laura is also told to return the capsule to the container within the following several hours in order to put the saboteur into a deep slumber, but the doctor finds a reason to keep her friend awake longer. Laura tries not to talk to Decker when they are alone, but just as the girl is about to go, he tells her the truth, that they are truly traveling to Rhea. The doctor begs Yoshida, one of her co-workers, to assist her by determining the true destination of their spacecraft. After complying with the request, the female programmer learns that their initial coordinates were incorrect, the software has an alternate arrival point, but it is hard to determine what that location is. The crew gets together for a little celebration within the ship. Unexpectedly, the lights in the cabin flicker, prompting Laura to see Yoshida to inquire about the possible connection between her findings and this. The girl is discovered by the doctor in the electronics compartment, dead but with evidence of extraterrestrial hands. The culprit is currently hidden someplace on the ship, and the crew puts the responsibility on Decker, who was awoken and freed from the capsule once more. The captain gives the order for everyone to arm and head out to find the stowaway. The team searches compartment after compartment but cannot locate Decker. At last, Laura's companion spots an open shaft and sends the girl to investigate before making his way to the other escape. A ferocious guy with a beard attacks Laura after she becomes trapped in a garbage section. After the girl is rescued and her assailant is eliminated from around the corner, Portman looks around and sees that it's the same terrorist who wishes to attack Cassandra. After Decker is apprehended, the captain beats him until he divulges the details of the scheme he brought to the ship, but the man instead claims that Rhea's planet is a fake. The organization that planned the entire event really discovered that life could continue on Earth, but they chose to keep this information to themselves by inventing a myth about a paradise planet and connecting everyone attempting to transition to virtual reality with a wire inserted into their back. Decker is cut off from speaking by Lindbergh, leading Laura to surmise that the captain is aware of all the man has just stated. After reporting to Anna that the young capsule patient may be taken back to the containers, she learns that the doctor's shift is coming to an end and she has to return to bed. At one point, a weapon emerges in the hands of both ladies when they realize they are lying to each other, but the captain is faster. At this time, Decker is surrounded by mercenaries who are brandishing guns. Lindbergh chooses to inform Laura that Rhea is only a fake, it has failed to replenish the planet's population, and all those who were hoping to bring forth new life have perished. Since giving people hope was the government's primary means of maintaining order, this was kept a secret from the general public. The captain claims that although the imitation is flawless, neither the doctor nor her buddy Decker will ever discover it since they will be executed on sabotage charges. After discovering the truth from Decker, the mercenaries approach Lindbergh with inquiries and coerce her into returning to sleep in order to seize control of the ship and set off for the paradisiacal world. Decker, freed, approaches Laura and begs for her forgiveness, but the girl will only comply if her friend helps her locate her sister inside the containers. The man makes plans for him and Laura to enter the simulation, 
when the girl will transmit a message to Earth and he will locate Ariane in the interim. As Cassandra gets closer to the station, she gets ready to dock. The procedure starts. As his co-workers tinker with the ship systems, Decker heads into the cargo area to find Ariane and the capsule. However, the mercenaries choose to breach the agreement and go to Rhea independently, utilizing the captain's ticket that was taken and delaying the capsule's unloading time. When Decker locates Laura's sister, he plants explosives to demolish the phony Rhea, not realizing that the ship's men are also infiltrating. Laura departs the ship after listening to her friend, and she quickly loses control. When she attempts to reach Decker, the call is dropped. The man discovers Arian at the same instant. When Decker eventually locates his girlfriend, he informs her that there is nothing more he can do for her sister. The girl then begs her lover to put her inside the false version of Arian so that she can bid her farewell and communicate with Earth from there. Decker grants her wish, but he cautions her companion that she only has seven minutes left, failing which he will return her. When Laura opens her eyes, she discovers herself in the stunning woodland that she had always imagined. As the girl locates and joins her sister, Decker makes sure her spacesuit's power doesn't run out. Laura gives her sister a hug and then leaves without saying anything to her. After disclosing Rhea's secret in a message to Earth, Decker brings his companion out into the real world. There is only enough battery for one person, therefore he must remain. When the man ignores his protests, Laura witnesses her friend being propelled into space. Rhea's system breaks into millions of fragments as Laura manages to travel back in time. Dr. Portman returns to her rooms but is unable to locate the girl, who could be the only proof of the massive deceit and people's link to the virtual network. She searches for the escaped girl, but when Lindbergh appears in the corridor in front of her, the ladies fight once more. Finally, Portman eliminates the traitor this time. When Laura finds the girl in the dining room, she lets out a gentle breath. Other stations play Rhea's most recent message, in which Dr. Laura Portman offers everyone great optimism. If you enjoy this video please hit the like button and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos like this. Thanks for watching.